Amen. Let's pray. I also just want to pray for our gathering this morning. Lord, I want to thank you that we can gather in your name. I want to thank you, Lord, that as we learned, as, as I learned yesterday, Lord, that we gather because we are one color, and that color is red, and that's because we are red by the blood of Jesus. And I want to thank you that all of us who are here today are red, blood washed, bought by the precious blood of the Lamb. And as such, Lord, I pray that all that is trying to infiltrate, all that is trying to cause destruction and disruption will be blocked out or fall dead right now in Jesus' name because the blood of Jesus conquers everything. I pray, Lord, that even as we're about to go into the word, that you will open our minds and our ears and our hearts to receive your word, to receive your word so that we may be planted in our souls and so that we may be trees of fruit that give, that give life and give nourishment to all that come our way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I just have two short verses this morning. I'm not sure how long the message will be, but the verses are short. Um, I'll be starting from Ezekiel 11. Ezekiel 11 from verse 19. And you guys know usually from Sunday after service, I start praying for the next message. Um, and there's one message that has stood out in us. It's God, well, what is the message? What is the message? And he said, hearts are divided. And I don't know what that means. And I said, Lord, what does that mean? Does it mean that as a body our hearts are divided? And he said, no. As individuals, as people, as, as, as singular bodies of Christ, as singular temples of the Holy Spirit, we're not fully and holy giving everything to the Lord. Right, so I'm going to be reading from Ezekiel, Ezekiel 11, 19. Remember that Ezekiel is a book of prophecy. Book of and this is the Lord speaking. Now you guys know that, especially in the books of prophecy, God's people usually deterred at a stage. They were there and there and there and there, and then their eyes wandered. We know that story, right? It's like, ooh, a shiny something. Ooh, a balloon. I've been there and there about to me. Oh God, oh God, oh look a balloon. Oh, oh look a balloon. And then that's what happened to God's people, am I right? Every time there was a new invasion, or every time there was a new earthly move, or every time something different happening, quickly they took their eyes off the Lord. They allowed distractions to come and time and time again we see it in the books of prophecy. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joel, all these guys, God continuously had to bring his people back into line. And it wasn't even so much the eyes, it wasn't even so much when the people lived as in the eyes of the people one other things. It wasn't about the eyes, it was about the hearts of the people. The hearts of the people. And I said to God, I said, but sure, Lord, is this, is this, is this not for me personally? He says, no. This is for my body. Because we cannot fully move into and accelerate into the new season when the hearts of my people are divided. When my, the hearts of my people are allocated to different sections. They have different things. And I just have one little cubicle in their hearts. And Ezekiel 11, 19 says, I will give them an undivided heart. I will give them an undivided heart. If God says he's going to give us an undivided heart, it means that our hearts are divided. divided. You guys, do you guys know the, 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 bi the biology of a heart? Of a human heart. How many chambers does a heart have? Four. Four. Right. So obviously this is not talking about a natural heart but it's talking about a spiritual reflection of what's happening. And sadly, and the word came very strongly this week, that many of us have given God a chamber. Many of us have given God a little section of our hearts. And when it suits us, or when we so choose, we access that chamber that is labeled God. Amen. Amen. Many of us don't just allow our eyes and our minds, I'm talking about the body and the soul now. It's not just about the body and the soul, but our spirits, our heart spirits are divided. And the word came very strongly this week that if we are truly going to move into the new, if we are going to truly experience the acceleration, this excitement in the spirit as is happening, <coughs> we have to ask God and we have to, we have to seek an undivided heart. We cannot 
compartmentalize our relationship with the Lord. No amens on that. <laughs> we cannot compartmentalize and segregate and box our relationship with God and take out the little God segment on a Wednesday and a Sunday. In this new season, God is seeking undivided hearts. I will give them an undivided heart. And then what? Put a new spirit. So before the new spirit, what is to happen? The heart must be undivided. Before we truly experience the new move of God on the earth, before we experience the new anointing, before we experience the new acceleration, we have to have an undivided heart. Not a heart that is one moment there, <coughs> and then we're there, and then we're on this thing, and then we're on, oh, and now it's Sunday, where's, where's the God section? <laughs> Ring a bell? <laughs> and we're all guilty of that. <laughs> we're all guilty of giving God a little section, and the rest sometimes we don't even allow access to. And it might not even be in terms of distractions, but it'll even be in the things that we deem important. Finances is one of those. Mm -hmm. God's not often in the finance section. That runs on its own. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, there's a building, there's a finance building, God is next door, but he's not allowed in. Because our hearts are divided. So God doesn't get access to finances. That's for us to take care of. God doesn't sometimes get access to issues. What's the most, uh, in the three years of counseling we've been doing, we often hear, ah, I got into this mess myself, I'll sort it out myself. Mm. So God doesn't even get access into the things that God can sort out like that because our hearts are divided. We even have a section in our heart that's labeled me. We have a section in our heart that is labeled me, that's labeled I, because you feel that you can sort certain things out better than God can. That's true. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Before the new spirit, you need a new heart. Mm -hmm. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them, oh, and this is good. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. A heart of stone keeps out the things of the Lord. A heart of stone blocks off God in certain areas. A heart of stone wants to access God like a lucky packet. Mm. Didn't I speak about a lucky packet was last week? Yeah, I, I spoke about we, we try to pick out the things mm. of God like a lucky packet. Say not like this. God doesn't want a heart of stone. Hearts of stone are for idols. Mm -hmm. The only reason you will have a heart of stone if you yourself are the idol. Mm. Mm. Amen? Yeah. If you yourself are so bold and brash as to put yourself before the Spirit of God. Mm. And God is saying, no, no, no. I don't want idols worshipping me. Idols don't worship me anyway, they're stone, right? Mm. So let's get rid of the stone. And let's give a heart of flesh. Why a heart of flesh? Because a heart of flesh will start feeling and experiencing the things of the Spirit. Mm. A heart of flesh will experience the glory of God. A heart of flesh will experience when God speaks. Can stone hear? No. Can stone speak? No. Can stone go out and minister? No. Can stone share and, and, and give peace and talk about the things of God? No. So our hearts are divided. God wants to give an undivided heart before the new spirit. God wants to remove from us that heart of stone that is not living, that cannot do anything in the kingdom. Can we operate as a piece of stone in the kingdom? No. 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 We have to be living, breathing. Breathing what? Breathing the Spirit of God. Breathing in the breath of God. We are in the season of hay. We are in the season of the breath of God. We have to be breathing in that. That should be what's pumping through our veins. But it's not going to pump through our veins if our heart is segmented into different things and if our heart is made out of stone. Mm -hmm. The very life force that pumps through us has to be the blood of Jesus. And the very breath that we breathe must be the spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. I will remove from them their heart of stone 
and give them a heart of flesh. And I like this because God is so cool once again. He's saying, you can't remove your heart of stone. I will do it. God will do it. But before God does that, I think there's a little part, on our, something from our part. Mm. And that something might have to be surrender. Mm. Mm. Lord, my heart is divided. Mm. Lord, I haven't been focusing. Lord, I'm not moving in your kingdom as I should be moving. Mm. I've become stagnant like a block of stone. Mm. Forgive me, Lord. And because you made me, only you can heal me. Mm. Because you made me, only you can restore me. Mm. So come, Lord, remove this heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh, pumping your blood, mm. built in your DNA, mm. and mm. breathing your spirit of the new. Mm. New spirit for a new season. Mm. Amen. Turn with me to Psalm 86. And you guys know that I've often told a few of you, if you're struggling with anything or whatever, go to the Psalms. One of the reasons that God saw David as a man after his own heart was not because David was king. It was not because David conquered many nations. It was not because David had it in his heart to build a temple of God. Those, those sounds are cool things, right? was not because, you know that before David, the people of Israel didn't even have a capital? They just kind of lived there. And then under David, he's like, but what are we doing here, people of the Lord? We need a capital. Ah, oh, Jerusalem. And he went to conquer Jerusalem, and he sent it as the capital for God's people. And his whole mission, you know, they were carrying the ark around, and David's heart is like, we need to keep, we need to keep the spirit of God in residence. And still, it wasn't the main reason that David was described mm -hmm. as a man after God's own heart. The reason was because David was true before the Lord. Mm -hmm. David was honest before God. Mm -hmm. If David was unhappy, he would say, Lord, I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. If David was struggling, he would say, Lord, do not turn your face away from me. I'm in a mess. David didn't have an undivided heart. In the good times and the bad times, in the victories and in the losses, his heart was with the Lord. Mm. David did not have an undivided heart. Mm. Mm. His heart was always focused on the Lord. You were reading uh, things in Chronicles, and if you guys know that story, uh, David got a bit self-righteous the one time. <coughs> I don't know if you remember that verse, we looked at you and I together. He got a bit self-righteous about something, and then he instructed one of his leaders to count how many soldiers he had, yeah, because yeah. he had just won a victory, a great victory, yeah. and he was feeling very proud of himself. He was <coughs> all count my worries, because somehow, he had that little brain aneurysm that day, a little slip of, of focus, and, and he said somehow his victory was determined on how many soldiers he had. So he had one of his men go out and count the soldiers, and this was initiated by Satan. The word says, Satan's actually mentioned here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Satan spoke to David and told him to count the number of arms immediately in his arm. Mm -hmm. And David listened. Sure. And he did so and was very pleased. But the whole time he knew it wasn't of God. And then God sent a prophet to speak to him. And he said, David, this has to be punished. It's not of me. You listen to the enemy. And he gave him three, God gave him the choice of three punishments. God gave him a choice of three punishments, and they were, uh, we looked at them and I said, sure, I don't know what I'd choose. Because the one was like a third of God would kill a third of the army, the one was God would give famine for three years, I can't remember the exact details, and the one was a personal attack on David. And because David's eyes and heart was fully focused on the Lord, not selfish, not a hard man of stone, he took the personal punishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's also the mark of a heart that's undivided. A heart that doesn't have compartments, but a heart that says, Lord, it's me and you. Lord, yes, it was mine. I, I can't, Lord, although that other, other punishment would exclude me, it's between me and you this. I wronged you. So, Lord, you punish me. It had nothing to do with the people. But what do some of us do? Who was it? It was you. Who was that? It was it? I don't want any part of that. Why? Because our hearts are selfish. Made of stone. Separated from
from the true purpose and the true calling of God. Eyes are unlocked on the Lord, but looking elsewhere, easily distracted, easily disheartened, easily discouraged. But David knew the secret, and the secret was it's him and God 100%. 100% his heart belonged to the Lord, not divided. And he says in Psalm 86, teach me your way, O Lord. I love that about David. He never felt that he arrived. Mm -hmm. He never felt that he knew enough. Even on his last day, his dying breath was a psalm that he wrote in praise to the Lord. He never felt that he had reached a pinnacle where he could say, you know what, I've learned enough. Thank you, I'm, I'm off now. Here he is saying, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in what? Your truth. And the only way we can truly have an undivided heart, guys, is if we start focusing on the truth of God in our lives. What is God's truth for you? What is God's truth for your situation? Is it God's truth or your truth? Mm -hmm. Do we start rationalizing to the point where the section of our heart that belongs to us gets so big that God's truth doesn't matter anymore? Or is it still God's truth that is guiding your decisions? Is it God's truth that is guiding your actions? Is it God's truth that is directing your steps? And the only way you'll be able to answer that is first by asking, is my heart undivided? Because if your heart is undivided, it means that yes, 100% you're walking in the plan God has for you. Are you walking in the plan God has for you? Or has the hearts of stone gotten so big that you as the idol have now taken over? And David says, teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me. Lord, teach me about you. Teach me about what you want me to do. Lord, teach me about your work. Teach me about your spirit. Teach me, teach me, teach me. Your way, O oh Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Are you walking in God's truth, family? Are you walking in God's truth? Or are you walking in your version of the truth for your life? <coughs> you know, sometimes you just start panicking in life. You just start panicking with all sorts of things and you're like, wow, I better make a plan. And you're like, okay, Lord, I don't see where the finances is coming. I better go and sell a kidney. I better go and, you know, you, you just think weird things. You know, you want to sell your hair, you sell your car. You know what I'm talking about? You guys seen the air on TV? I love it. Have you seen it now? Hey? Have you seen it? I love it. The guy standing in the suit, brilliant. And he's like, it's only had one owner. And uh, I've never had any trouble with it myself. It's in excellent condition. And the lady's packing the groceries in her bucket. And she's like, I sugar winner. I don't want your kidney. <laughs> you know? And that's what happens, okay? That's an extreme version, but people start getting desperate. People start getting desperate in decision making. People start getting desperate in, in life choices. When they're not walking in the truth of the Lord. When they're not patient enough to wait on the Lord. When they're not patient enough to seek the counsel of God. And then we start making rash, crazy decisions. And David says, I don't want that, Lord. I don't want to do things on my own. I don't want to, I don't want to make crazy decisions and, and, in, and have you clean up the mess. I want to walk in your truth from the word go. Proverbs 3 says, in all your ways, not in some. Proverbs 3 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Mm. God cannot direct your paths if you selectively allow God into your life. God cannot, you, you cannot walk in the truth of God if your heart is divided and God has a little section, a little pocket. And David knew this. He got it. It was all about God. All or nothing. And then he says, then he says it. He says, give me. This was David's prayer. He says, give me, Lord, an undivided heart. 
that I may fear your name. Fear your name. And in some versions of the Bible, that fear your name means so that I may <coughs> worship your name. So that I may honor you. So that I may glorify you. And David got that. Give me an undivided heart. An undivided heart. A heart that wakes up and, and you are on it. A heart that goes through the day, Lord, and I'm focused on you. A heart where at night you are the last I think of and I praise your name. So God told Ezekiel that the undivided heart will come in, the spirit will come, amen. And then he also told Ezekiel that I will give you a heart of flesh in place of your heart of stone. So we must, we must remove the part of our hearts that have become hardened to God. And then David takes us a step further and he says, Lord, teach me. I want to walk in your truth. And my question today is, are you walking in God's truth for your life? Based on an undivided heart. Give me, Lord, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name that I may reverence your name, that I may worship your name, that if I hear someone mention your name, that, that I'll experience your glory. If I hear that it's Sunday, or not even, maybe somehow, you know, your job's so crazy, you've got it say it's Sunday, and you're like, oh, it's Sunday, and you run to the house of the Lord, because your heart is undivided. And you hear it's pre-gathering, and you're like, Lord, I'm not missing out. I'm running to that pre-gathering, because my heart is on you, and not on my tired state. Not on what I have to do tomorrow, but my heart is on you. If I hear this, there's some opportunity where I can reach out, you will run and you will say, Lord, my heart is undivided. I will give you my everything to the death. You know that song of Misty Edwards is beautiful. She says, to the death, my Lord, to the death, to the death, my Lord, my heart is undivided. Teach me your way, O oh Lord and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. And in verse 12 he says, I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. Not some of my heart. Guys, praise and worship of the Lord needs to be, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's true, it needs to be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Not an event. Mm -hmm. Prayer should be a lifestyle. Not an event, not something that we do when we gather on a Tuesday mm -hmm. or when there's a special gathering. It should, it should be a continuous part of our life. If we are breathing in the Spirit, the things of the Spirit are worship of the Lord. The things of the Spirit are prayer and praise. Those are the things that we should, we should take in. Those are the things we should live by. If our heart is the heart of the flesh that God is giving us, we should be pumping the things of God. The blood of Jesus, the Spirit of God, the truth, <coughs> and the light that which God wants to give us. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in the end. And I really want, want you to take this seriously, especially because we are talking a lot about the new season. We are in the new season. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. We are already experiencing great spiritual connection, spiritual insight. Mm -hmm. The amount of prophecy we get is on a weekly basis. Now, not even a weekly basis. At prayer meetings, there's three, four prophetic words. Do you have you guys noticed the increase mm -hmm. in all of these things? So, there's no doubt in my mind that we are in the new season. The season of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. The season of the breath of God. But if for some reason you feel that you are not experiencing that fullness, possibly maybe talking about the fullness and I've been touched on it. For some reason if you feel that you are not experiencing that fullness of the Lord and the fullness of God's Spirit in this new season, I'm going to urge you to spend a bit of time in reflection especially on this concept of your heart. Where is your focus? What is getting your attention? What parts of your life is God still left out of? God doesn't want to be tear and be, you know, we, we can't fool God, guys. 
We can't fool God with the splash here and the splash there and the, the here. We can't do that. The word of God says that he sits high and he looks low. Because he's looking at all of us. And he's looking deep into each of us. 1 Samuel 17, 6, I think it is, says, Man might look at the outside, but God looks at the heart. <clears throat> what will God see? Or what is God seeing when God looks at your heart? Is it one that's given him a splash here and there because it's so divided? Or is it wholly concentrated on, given to him? Like David. Good, bad, up, down, screams, tantrums. Even if you tantrum in, you must tantrum for the Lord. Tantrum in the presence of the Lord. It's tantrum. But it's not tantrum out of our own selfishness. But everything we do must be for the Lord. If we're going to celebrate, we must celebrate with the Lord. If we're going to cry, we must cry. If we're going to mourn, we must mourn. But everything involving God. Talk to God. If repentance has to happen, let it happen. If there has to be some confession, let it happen. But do not allow any longer a divided heart to keep you from your purpose. Do not allow a divided heart to keep you in a state of stress and anxiety. Because maybe God wasn't allowed in the finances, or God wasn't allowed in the, the family situation. One. We don't allow that anymore. God is God. And there's no limit to what He can do. So let's give Him everything. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for your word and we want to we know, Lord, and we acknowledge that this word has come because there's a need. And I believe, Lord, that this word has come because you've looked over your people and you have seen the distractions of your heart. You have seen the distractions of your thoughts and of your minds. And I pray right now, Lord, that even as this word has gone, that it will penetrate past everything about us. Like in Hebrews, you, you say that your word is, is so sharp, it is doubled in a two-edged sword. It separates spirit and soul. And I pray that this word will separate spirit and soul and that your truth will plant itself deep in our very being so that we can reflect and repent because the new is here. So that we can reflect and repent so that we can get your new spirit and a heart of flesh so that we can be alive and moving in your kingdom at this time. This time, Lord, when you are raising up your armies like never before. We want to turn our hearts to you wholly and fully to in turn experience your fullness, Lord. Mm 